Did you know that the nine realms of Norse mythology were changed by Christianity? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the nine realms of Norse cosmology, meaning their understanding of the universe. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you haven't already heard, World History Encyclopedia has teamed up with Andante Travels to bring you the Treasures of Ancient Greece Guided Tour. Join our expert tour guide, Dr. Rita Roussos, as she takes you on a journey through classical Athens, to Delphi, across the Gulf of Corinth, and into the Peloponnesian Hills, where the hero Hercules began his twelve labours, and King Agamemnon set out to rescue Helen and capture Troy. Make sure to hit the link in the description below to learn all about this trip, and we hope to see you there! The Norse people divided their universe into nine realms, with the world tree, Yggdrasil, in the centre. From Yggdrasil, the nine realms of their cosmology either spread out from it, or they stretched from the roots below. Much of the earlier Norse literary works, known as Eddic and Skaldic poetry, assume an awareness or prior knowledge of the cosmology. And so they don't often have descriptions of locations, and specific details on some of the realms is lacking, so our understanding of some realms is far less clear than others. The nine realms of Norse cosmology all coexisted and operated together until the twilight of the gods, Ragnarok, the end of the Norse world. The realms weren't the only things in the roots of the Yggdrasil, for the Norns, the Fates, also lived within the roots. The Norns were three supernatural women who could weave destinies of both human beings and the gods, very similar to ancient Greek beliefs. Religion in Norse tradition was practiced both in the home and in sacred spaces, like specific clearings in the woods, and their religion was a fully integrated part of their everyday lives. We do have evidence for temples to the Norse gods, but we have no record of what religious or ritual practices may have taken place at these sites. Plus, much of what we do know about Norse mythology is not dated from the Viking period, but after Christianity had become the main religion. For example, probably the best known and also the most important of our sources is Snorri Sturluson. Snorri lived between 1179 and 1241 CE, and was an Icelandic Christian writer writing down the Norse sagas. But since he was writing after the end of the Viking Age, his works were altered to fit his audience. There are of course other writings, like the Saga of the Volsungs, that was written down by an anonymous Christian scribe in around 1250, and that has since been cited by scholars as representing authentic Norse beliefs. But all of these works, although definitely pointing to earlier Norse stories and traditions, are altered by the Christian context they were written in. Like how the concept of hell as an afterlife realm is thought to have been a purely Christian addition, even though there was already a realm known as Niflhel existing from older sources. From what has survived from Norse history, we can say that the original nine realms of the Norse universe were probably Asgard, the realm of the Aesir, who we'd call the gods, Alfheim, the realm of the bright elves, Jotunheim, the realm of the giants, Midgard, the realm of the humans, Muspelheim or Muspel, which is either a fire giant or the forces of chaos or their realm, Nidavellir, the realm of the dwarves, Niflheim, the realm of ice and mist, possibly with the lower realm of Niflhel, Svartalfheim, the realm of the black elves, and Vanaheim, the realm of the Vanir, a second type of gods. But after Snorri's work on the Norse myths, these nine realms changed. He seems to have confused the Black Elves with the Dwarves, he merged Svartalfheim and Nidavellir into a single realm, and added the concept of Hell as the most populated afterlife realm, among other changes. So after the works of Snorri, this is what the nine realms look like. Asgard, the realm of the Aesir, which is joined to Midgard by the rainbow bridge Bifrost. Alfheim, the realm of the elves. Hel, the realm of those who died of illness or old age. 
Jotunheim, the realm of the giants and frost giants. Midgard, the realm of the humans between Asgard and Jotunheim. Muspelheim, the realm of fire, the fire giant Suter and Suter's forces of chaos. Nidavellir slash Svartalfheim, the realm of the dwarfs beneath the earth. Niflheim, the realm of ice, snow and mist near Muspelheim. And Vanaheim, the realm of the Vanir. Some of the realms from the Christian era writings of Norse mythology wouldn't have been recognized by pre-Christian Scandinavians, but they are the ones that are far more clear to us today. So let's have a look at each of the post-Christian nine realms and find out what they're all about. First, we have Asgard. Asgard was originally thought to be part of the human world, but Snorri puts it in the heavens and connects it to the human realm of Midgard with the rainbow bridge Bifrost. It is the home of the Aesir, which is a large group of the Norse gods, with another group being known as the Vanir. At one time, there was a war between the Aesir and the Vanir, but eventually they made peace and exchanged hostages in order to maintain order, which means that some Vanir, like the fertility goddess Freya, lived with the Aesir in Asgard. The best known Norse gods like Odin, Thor, Loki and Baldr all lived in Asgard and the realm is described as a celestial city of high towers surrounded by a great wall. Next is Alfheim, which also existed in the heavens near Asgard and before Snorri made it the home of all elves, it was the home of only the light or bright elves. The Vanir god Freyr, twin brother of Freya, presided over the realm as one of the Vanir hostages sent to Asgard after the war. The elves who inhabit the realm of Alfheim were bright and beautiful magical beings who inspired music, the arts and creativity in general. There was a real place named Alfheimer, which was located between the mouths of two rivers, Gota and Glom, at the border between Sweden and Norway. And apparently the people from this region were considered fairer than others. Although the claim has been challenged, some scholars have suggested that the elven realm of Alfheim was inspired by the geographic region of Alfheimer. The realm isn't described clearly in the Norse myths, but you can assume due to the nature of the elves that their realm would be just as lovely. Then we have the realm of Hel, a dark and gloomy place presided over by the goddess Hel, the daughter of Loki and sister to the Midgard serpent and the wolf Fenrir. The realm of Hel was surrounded by a wall with just one gate to enter, and the only way you could reach Hel was to travel down the long, long downhill path known as Helveg, or the road to Hel, where you also had to cross over a dangerous river of weapons. Hel became the place for the souls of those who didn't die in battle, but who died of old age or disease. Warriors who died in battle would go to Valhalla in Asgard, not to Hel. Because most people weren't warriors, Hell was the realm where most people's souls ended up. There they would wander in a kind of twilight, but also continue living more or less the way they did when they were alive. Jotunheim, sometimes known as Utgard, was located near both Asgard and Midgard, and was the realm of the giants and frost giants. Jotunheim was believed to be an untamable place, a primordial place of chaos and magic. It was a place where the god of mischief, Loki, came from, although he lived in Asgard. Generally speaking, Jotunheim was considered a place best avoided, although there are myths of gods going there for a specific purpose. To reach Jotunheim from Asgard, you have to cross the difficult river called Iving, but there are stories of Odin and Thor crossing it in order to enter the chaotic realm. Then there is Midgard, the realm of the humans, which was first populated by Ask and Embla, who were made by the gods out of an ash tree and an elm tree, and then became the ancestors to the human race. After the first humans were created, the gods created Midgard to protect them, and then they created Asgard, and it is assumed that they went on to create animals on Midgard and the rainbow bridge between the two realms. Next we have Muspelheim, which according to Snorri was the primordial realm of fire and was important for the creation of the world. Snorri interpreted Muspelheim as the realm where the fire giant Sutur lived, who would emerge at Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, to destroy Asgard along with everything else. This interpretation has been challenged in modern times and it's believed that Muspel was originally a giant that came from a fiery world with his sole function being the part he plays in Ragnarok, 
the destruction of the realms, and the death of many, though not all, of the gods. Snorri combined the two realms, Nidavellir and Svartalfheim, into one realm, which was below Midgard, deep in the earth, where the dwarves lived and worked at their forges. It was a dark and smoky place, lit only by the fires of the forges and torches on the walls. The dwarves were associated with magic and craftsmanship, and it was they who created Thor's famous hammer, Mjolnir, as well as Odin's spear. They are also responsible for the mead of poetry, which Odin steals from the giants and gives to the gods, who then inspire poets through drink to create their verse. Next we have Niflheim, which is one of the oldest realms along with Muspelheim, except this realm is a primordial land of ice, mist and snow, and was the place where all life began. No one lives in the cold and misty realm of Niflheim, and although Snorri equated this realm with Niflhel, which he then understood as the location of hell, as was a place that existed in Norse cosmology before Christianity, it was probably once comparable to that of Tartarus in Greek mythology. It is said that after Odin threw the goddess Hel into Niflheim, he gave her power over the dead, and that she would have passed through Niflheim into Niflhel, which means the dark realm of Hel, where she then ruled. And finally, we have the realm of Vanaheim, which was the home of the other group of Norse gods known as the Vanir, who were associated with magic and fertility. After the war between the Vanir and the Aesir, over what we're not too sure, the Vanir sea god Njord and his two children, Freyr and Freya, went to live in Asgard. We don't have any descriptions of Vanaheim, but we can assume it was a fertile and pleasant realm full of light and magic, given the nature of the gods who called the realm home. There was also the separate realm of Folkvanger, meaning field of the people, somewhere in Asgard, which Freya presided over. It was a realm of the dead where only people who had died in battle could spend their afterlife. Freya took half of those who fell fighting, and Odin took the other to spend their afterlife in Valhalla. All of these realms were intertwined to greater or lesser degrees until the day of Ragnarok, when the Midgard Serpent, the Wolf Fenrir, and the Goddess Hel broke free and with their father Loki, began the battle that would destroy them. Afterwards though, there would be a rebirth of the realms, an aspect of the myth considered a later Christian addition, but possibly authentic to the original Norse vision, which viewed life as cyclical, subject to change, but never ending. Do you have a favourite realm? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.